All right, looks like we're live here. Fantastic. All right, well, I guess without further ado, a good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome to our webinar, the SharePoint Connector 3.0 Incoming Documents. Now, you're probably wondering what the 3.0 represents, and it represents the third iteration of our app. My name is Mark Buckman, and I am your host today. And joining us is our nine-time Microsoft MVP, YouTube extraordinaire, and co-founder of eFocus, Eric Hogard. Hi, Eric, guys. a few words. <laughs> uh, hi. Thanks, Eric. All right. So. Oh, I'm sorry, just gonna get to my screen here. Okay, before we get into it, let's quickly cover off the agenda. We're gonna learn a little bit more about eFocus, who we are and what we do. We are then gonna dive into the SharePoint Connector app, including what's new with this most recent update. Eric will then give us a live demonstration of the app, including the new incoming documents functionality. And then uh, finally, we're gonna wrap it up with a live Q&A. But first we have a few housekeeping items. We want this uh, webinar to be highly interactive, so please do get your questions into the Q&A panel. We are super excited about this webinar. and We want to share this excitement with you on our social media. We are active on LinkedIn and Twitter, and you can learn more about our apps, upcoming events, and blogs. So just find us at, at eFocus. And finally, at the conclusion of the webinar, please take a couple of minutes to share your feedback as we're always looking at ways to improve on what we do. Now, a little bit about eFocus. We're gonna kick this off with a little exercise. Take a deep breath. Our client-first approach to technology projects means that we take a genuine interest in your business and your success, delivering the OM to your namaste. EFocus delivers Dynamics 365 Business Central apps, technology, and solutions to increase the agility, breadth, and depth, scale and growth potential of your ERP. Our mission is to give you that deep exhale feeling so you can achieve more, and each of our apps are designed to do exactly that. Like a lot of things in life, Microsoft products user needs change and evolve over time. Our commitment to you is to continue to upgrade and enhance our apps, much like what, much like what we've done with the SharePoint Connector 3.0. So we're gonna kick things off with a little poll. Today, we're focusing on the SharePoint Connector app, which is one of our most popular apps on AppSource. So let's maybe start off with a quick poll to see how familiar everyone is with it. It should be said that there are several SharePoint Connector options that are available in the marketplace, but ours was one of the first to market and it's also the most fully featured. But the great thing about Business Central Cloud is that you, the customer, have options. You can trial these solutions, take them for a test drive, so to speak, to see which one fits your needs the best. So let's get everyone to look for their mouses, put down their coffee, and uh, let's take a quick look at the poll to see where we're at right now. And we'll just give it a few more moments. Three, two, and one. And uh, fantastic. So uh, we've got uh, a pretty close tie here. We've got 44% uh, that says that we've heard of it but never used it. And 56% uh, saying that, yes, my organization uses it, which is fantastic. So glad to have you all here today. So first, let's get to, uh, let's dive into a little bit more background of the app itself. The SharePoint Connector app enables users to connect their data in Business Central and SharePoint without the cumbersome step of having to move those documents manually. There are several use cases for the SharePoint Connector app, but they can be boiled down to two main benefits, organizing documents and taming the ongoing chaos. The SharePoint Connector app allows you to seamlessly connect your Business Central data to folders in SharePoint. 
and you can even share that Business Central data with third parties. Plus, you do have that full control over how the data is mapped over to SharePoint. You can automatically upload printed PDF order documents, such as posted uh, sales invoices or posted purchase invoices into the appropriate folder in uh, SharePoint automatically. <clears throat> you can also upload PDF documents from BC to SharePoint through a dra drag and drop functionality. And you can also save uh, printed reports directly from Business Central into SharePoint. You have access to your SharePoint content directly within Business Central without ever having to leave the app. You can just double click on the document and open it opens up right in front of you. And if you're a user of Adobe Sign or DocuSign, you're in luck. From BC, you can request signatures and monitor the signing status and manage these signed documents without ever having to leave the app. These are just a few features with the SharePoint connector, and we will have Eric actually cover this in a high-level overview before he jumps into the new functionality in his live uh, demonstration. Now, we are here obviously to focus on today's new feature, the incoming documents, which we're, which we're super excited to share with you. And uh, again, uh, excited to get started here. So let's learn a little bit more about incoming documents. When you run your business, you are dealing with a constant influx of documents from different sources, from different formats. Some are archived correctly, but many just end up sitting where they were received, be it in an email or a shared folder or anything else. It's a huge job manually to sort and properly archive these documents. It's essentially a full-time job. And that's where the SharePoint Connector's newest feature comes into play. Now, it's a great time to pass it over to Eric, our app developer, for our demo. Eric, if you can sure. share your screen, let's take it. Uh, excellent. So I am in a cloud instance of Business Central, and I am in a Business Central instance that has the SharePoint Connector installed. And um, for for those uh, who have heard of it, but actually never used it, let me just give you a quick overview. Uh, from a, user's, a, a single user's perspective, what is the SharePoint Connector? But the, and they will say, but the share connector is, you know, is a box that will show up uh, in places where I need to manage documents. So in this case, I created a new customer, and on the customer card, I have the SharePoint box. I can go and grab something. Let's grab some puppies uh, and and drag them onto the box, and they get uploaded. Uh, great. I can also uh from the sharepoint menu here say okay let me generate a document uh, and i get a list of, of templates and these templates are actually reports that has been assigned to be used as templates on the customer some of them potentially with a uh, with a, a custom report layout uh, and and that's the case of this one i call customer letter so we could say webinar letter and um, what is happening now is that we uh, we have configured this to output a word document um so now i have this one you can see this is a doc uh, uh doc x this is a word document so if i click on it i uh, i open up this one in word online and i can edit um i can say orlando here um and this is the document live i'm editing i could also open it in in real word if i prefer that uh, i close it down again so this this document is there it exists but where is there well if i use the sharepoint menu again and then i go to browse on sharepoint it will actually take me to the spot where this document exists and we can see that it exists in what in um in SharePoint lingo is a document library. In this case, it's just called documents. Uh, inside that, there's a folder called 
customer and inside that there's a folder called webinar 2022 which is the name of the customer i just created so by uploading documents i'm just saying hey i'm dragging or creating a document then the folder is created in the right spot just in time um but one thing that's important in the world of cloud is that we, we are no users are no longer you know living inside a single application all day and everything has to happen within that single application so it's perfectly fine if now we take the the deer and and, and we actually upload that from the SharePoint side of it so a non bc user is adding a file to the folder structure that is built by by uh, by business central so now we have that file in here and that if i go back to uh, the central and I hit a five to refresh the screen, we can see that now we also have this photo uh, in, in the folder. So the connector is truly living up to its name saying, hey, we're connecting SharePoint and Business Central. We're not making it exclusive that we can only work in Business Central. We can also work in, in SharePoint um, and so on. If I now take this customer and say, well, I want to create a sales order. So a new sales order on this customer. Let's see if we can wake Business Central up here, and I will, uh, I will select an item, and I will select the 1908 London Swirl Chair because the Olympics happens to be in London in, in 1908 um so now we have that so, uh, but but maybe there's a document associated with the sales order so we will add um well how about a uh, turtle baby turtle here um so now there's a, the, the baby turtles are sitting on the sales order then perhaps we're posting this and invoicing everything so I will post an invoice, this thing. Um, and we all know that the sales order goes away. Now the sales order is deleted because it's all been, uh, it's been completed. So there's nothing else to ship, there's nothing else to invoice. But we might have a, an archive version, but the sales order is gone. Um, so what happens to our baby turtles? Do they survive? Well, let's go to the, the the posted invoice. And we can see that now the turtles are sitting on the posted invoice. And if I hit a five here, uh, eventually this might take a minute or two, but in the background, the PDF version of this invoice is also getting added to this folder. But where is this folder, you might ask? Well, let's use the Browse and SharePoint again to look at this. And we can see that now we had the folder that was just created for the customer, which is the folder where we had the deer and the puppies and the document. And now there's a, a subfolder called sales. And in that there's a folder from our sales order. And this is where the baby turtles are located right now. And you can see that the invoice came now. So we are, we are not putting the creation of the invoice process in the actual posting process because that will prolong our posting uh, tremendously and we don't want to do that so it's actually sent off to a, a new thing that you can do in business central you can do stuff in the background so we're asking the microsoft server to hey you no know, go and create an invoice and then upload it to sharepoint in the background not to disturb our users so it came like a minute later and that that's the uh, the, the pdf version of of the invoice we just posted um so before i go into the uh the, the incoming documents what i want to sh show and say here is that what where the box is showing up and how the whole folder structure is is getting built is all up to you um meaning that you know any good demo actually shows a bit of setup or it's the other way around. A good demo never shows setup. I can't re really remember. Anyway, we have a setup screen where you actually define what tables in Business Central do you want to get to have SharePoint functionality. How 
do you want it to behave? How should the folders be created? We can see here with, with the sales header for, as an example, we have told that the sales header is actually sitting uh, under the customer table and the connecting field is the build to. And if we want to do the sell to instead of, we can do that. But you decide how the structure sh should be. And uh, out of the box, uh, the SharePoint connector supports uh, automatic, no, that's the wrong word. Out of the box, the SharePoint connector automatically can put the box on most used tables in the base app from Microsoft. But you might have custom uh, development, you might have other apps, and suddenly you want SharePoint functionality on those pieces also. And there's a very simple, we have an explanation on uh, on, on eFocus, the CA saying, so, hey, hey, this is what you need to do in order to add the box to anything. Uh, and we do mean anything. So uh, the great thing is that that's, we built this originally to support exactly that, that we could use it on our custom development, development we, that we could use it everywhere. So that's the, that's the core of the app that you can configure it to go anywhere. And one of the not necessary a version three functionality, but, but for those who are already using it, one of the, the newer things be, just before version three, you know, 2.99 is, is the ability to have more than one mapping within a single table. Uh, so in this case, this is uh, the cell setter. And we're saying that if this is a quote, then go into a quote folder instead. If we are on something, it's like a sales order that comes from a quote, let's still stay in the quote folder. If this is something that came from an opportunity from, from, from CRM, then let's stay in the opportunity folder. Uh, so, so there is a way to do conditional, uh, conditional mapping uh, within a single table. Um, anyway, so that that's the uh, that's the, the the quick overview of what is the, the SharePoint connector from uh, from the perspective of a, a a user. We got a lot of extra features, as as Mark mentioned. We do, do support e signing. Um, Actually, the take photo is is a uh, is is also a quite new addition. Um, so we can use the camera on uh, if you have a device with a camera, then you can actually get doc uh, photos directly into SharePoint uh, through the the Business Central app, either on phone or on a uh, on, on a tablet. Anyway, let's get into the piece that is headlining this thing incoming documents. So what we realized at some point is that this is great. Right now, I have either dragged documents in or I have generated documents. Uh, but quite often documents come from different external sources and, and it would be nice to achieve auto archiving. Uh, we could also, instead of call this incoming documents, then call it uh, auto archiving. But incoming documents seems to be a, 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 a industry term, so so that's kind of what we uh, we are adopting to. But but think about what Mark said that that we we you got documents coming in from a lot of different sources, and then what would be nice if you know most or all documents could just you know trickle into where they need to be, um, and uh, and for that we have created something new. And I, I go into the setup again. I should not go into setup, but I, I'm going to setup. So if we go down to the bottom here, we can see that we have incoming documents now. And what you start doing here is that you define a source. So a source is where documents appears. Um, and out of the box, we support currently three different sources. Um, we support uh, a SharePoint folder um, because maybe documents are coming in on SharePoint from something else. Documents are coming uh, by, by other apps that are creating uh, SharePoint things or, or you are using the OneDrive, OneDrive coupling 
so, so you have a corner of SharePoint mapped as a drive, and then files are getting copied to this drive from other apps. So, so they will end up on the SharePoint folder. That's one type of source where document can appear. Uh, the other one is that we do support a a very simple HTTP endpoint where if you have a web server that where documents appears, we can we can download the documents from there. There's some very technical uh, limitation to how this is this can work, but it can work. Um, and then the last one, which I actually think is the most exciting one, but it's also the most difficult one to, to explain, that we also accept documents from an API endpoint. Um, so, so what is an API? Well, uh, this was this was what Mark should have done a, a poll about. Uh, so, an API is a web service. Uh, so, we have been using web service with BC and with Nav for many years. Um, but now we kind of have a new generation of web services, and and they are labeled APIs. Um, there's there's two things about those that are interesting. One is that they are very very polite uh, to actually announce what they can do and what's available or so on. So from from other platforms, it's it's very easy to point to Business Central, and then you get a list of what's available or what it can do, and so on. Um, the other thing is that APIs are very, very static. The problem with exposing a, a random web page as web service is that if you do that uh, one day and then the next day somebody says, oh, we need this field on the screen to change, and you add a field or you change a field, or you do something on the screen because your users need that and then you break your web services because that screen happens to be the same as you exposed as a web service. So APIs are web services you know, evolved. Um, but we have an API here and the API is, is, is very simple. The API have the ability to receive a document. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll show you an example of that in just a second. Um, but after we have defined our sources, then what we can what we will define is a criteria. Let's actually find one that has one. Uh, I know this one has one, and this one was actually SharePoint. Did I just change that? I shouldn't. Um, so in this case, this. Endpoint has a criteria. The criteria is looking at table 23, meaning vendor, and you define a, a type of criteria. And, and, and we have out of the box four different criteria uh, defined. The first one is we can match an email. So we will go look in the document that is coming in through what's in the document and through OCR uh, to locate in this case, emails. We can also use something called regex, and, and regex is a, is a very computer nerdy thing, but, but regex is also a way to define a pattern. So if we're looking for a, uh, a, a specific code that has a prefix and numbers and postfix, whatever it's built up, we can design, uh, we can write a regex pattern saying, hey, this is, what you need to go search for. If you can find this in the document, then we can we can we can see if we have something in Business Central that matches this. We can do it in the document in in what's on the document, or we can also do in the file name. In some cases, you get files in and they're actually named, like they have the customer number in in the name, or they have a PO number in the name, or or whatever. So so we can do the same thing and look for a pattern in the name. And then we have one very specific one called file name with primary key. File name with primary key was added specifically to support uh, using the incoming document for data conversion, uh, specifically for for nav installations that used uh, uses either record links or SATA docs or or whatever else uh, that that uh, happened in NAV. So we are actually, for, for, for NAV for records, we have created a small uh, function that will 
take the documents you have in record links and copy them to a OneDrive mapped uh, folder. And in the copy process, it will uh, it will change the file name, so we put in a primary key in the file name, so we can see exactly where this document belongs. So we set up an incoming uh, source with this criteria, and then documents are just flowing into the right spot. Um, so the criteria, this was a long talk, I'm sorry, the, and, and some of this gets a tiny bit technical, uh, but, but the criteria is what actually doing the matching and say, okay, we can find something in the document that matches something we have in Business Central, so now we can connect the document to that. Um, we can we can also live without uh, without matching because maybe there is a it's not a clear way. So so when when we you're done setting this up and if you if you need OCR, you you need to put in a a service URL and a subscription key here from a we're using Azure Computer Vision, uh, which is really good at at OCRing these days. Uh, so to to use this, you need to add a Azure Computer Vision subscription uh, in order to have OCR service. So after you have set up your sources, you simply go to uh, SharePoint Incoming Documents, and it will open. Right now, it opens one source. So let's look at the one called Folder, and we can see that right now there are setting uh how many eight documents here uh and we did not set up any criteria so so in this case we need to do manual matching and manual matching would be that okay the panda i may i may click on that and and figure out oh, that's a panda uh, a panda needs to go you know that needs to go on a customer and the customer needs to go on is thirty thousand. okay so now this one is matched uh and and I can I can simply say either import and then it will import everything that has been matched uh, in 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 the journal, or I can do import single, and now the panda is added to this customer. Um, but let's uh, let's quickly jump to the other one. So remember I had one here called flow. That was the API endpoint. So at this point, there's nothing here. Uh, but what I have done, let me see if I can find it, is that I have created a, well, a Power Automate flow. Uh, what it used to be Microsoft Flow is now Microsoft Power Automate. And this one is called Receive Invoices from Vendors. Uh, and um, let's take a look at what it's actually doing. So a flow needs something to trigger it, something that will start the flow. Um, and and for, for, for this demo, I am using when an email is flagged. Uh, this might as well be when a, an email arrives or something else happens that, that has a document in it. So with flow, we, you, know, you can connect to all sorts of systems. Uh, and as long as you have a document in your flow, you can eventually uh, uh, channel that document into Business Central. Um, but in this case, I'm just saying whenever a document is flagged, so I can go in here and I have something prepared and I just need to flag it and then that will kick off the flow, um, which I actually might do because sometimes it takes a minute or two to kick in. So I have flagged this one. So what is happening is that when an email is flagged in this inbox, we go down to a apply to each and apply to each what well we are applying to each attachment so in this case we take the email and then for every attachment sitting on the email we're, we we want to we want to do something with the attachments we could also go with the email itself and put that into into sharepoint but but right now i'm going to i'm going to extract the attachments so with that, I get the attachments. Uh, so, so this is applied to each. So for, for each attachment, I'm going to do these steps that are below. So the first thing is that I need to grab the attachment. Then 
I'm, and you can see now this this is this is these are Outlook commands. Uh, but now I'm switching over to a Business Central command. So in this case, I I'm using create record, uh, and create record is connected to my business central so i can see that you know these are the environments the sandbox and production so I, right now we are working in the one called oh, it's easier to see here, the one called demo so we're connecting to demo and i'm going into into chronos and remember it's, i i said that apis are very polite and 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 the polite bit here is that you know APIs will tell, hey, these are all the 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 providers of APIs uh, we have in the system, and and uh, in this one, it's only Microsoft and eFocus apparently. Um, but uh, I have selected uh, eFocus, and in that one, I have a uh, a a table name because everything is kind of exposed as a table. Uh, and the table is called upload document. So I want to create a record in upload document. And I tell the source ID, meaning that this is actually this guy. Oops, that's a panda. Uh, and then I, I grab the file name. And in this case, I do a bit of a uh, bit of joggling because I want to to apply the uh, a timestamp. Um, See if we can show this meaningful. Uh, so I am I am applying back here. I am applying a timestamp uh, to the file name. So in case we are receiving the same name multiple times, it will not be the same file that we're all writing. Uh, and then I need to supply the document content, and and you do that by using something called Base64, which converts the the binary stuff into something that we can send into business central uh, so i create a record i tell what uh, uh, source it should come in on I, I tell the file name and the document content then i go to the next step and see this is i have created a record then i need to execute an action uh, so this is typically how apis are working today that you you supply the data first and then you tell the system what to do and and again what's happening here is that we are connecting to to to, uh, to the environment called demo and the company and we're using this category but now we want to use an action called upload and process um we can also just do upload and then the matching will hap happen later um but I, I'm, I'm, I want to force matching happening right away. And the only thing I need to supply, so this one is telling me, so which which record should we do this on? Well, we should do it on the one we just uploaded. So so this is what's happening with system ID. Um, and and now I'm doing this in Power Automate. This would be the same if you're in, uh, in, in Power Apps. This would be the same if you're in Logic Apps. Uh, so there's a bunch of different ways where you can, you can trigger this. You can also trigger this from many other places that, that supports APIs. Um, but I, I thought this was, was a great way to actually show very visually how how this works so let's go back and see here um come on microsoft so did we run it or not 40 minutes ago that does not seem like the one that i let's move around and do this again and see if we can trigger this Um, so this will eventually run. Now it's running, uh, and it succeeded. This took four seconds. So if I go back into to Business Central and I refresh this thing, we can see that we got a PDF here. We can also see that this got mapped to a vendor. So the only thing we need to do now is is basically import this. And if we go to this vendor here 
and in the incoming invoices we have the the document that we just sent from my email so it's here and it's probably just an invoice i printed out of business central uh just before and the reason this got mapped is because let's see if we can actually let me so here i there's an email uh on um in in the pdf itself and uh, that email happened to be the email on this vendor card and the criteria i set up is matching that so it 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 used the email criteria. So it looked at the OCR data and and grabbed that out of the PDF, and then went to look up a vendor. So oh, this belongs to the first up consultant. So we will map it to them. Um, and and we could we could configure this to to not even I have to hit, hit import here. Uh, uh, so it will just flow in, complete automatic. Uh, So that is more or less incoming documents. We are working on other things to uh, to enhance this uh, and and add new types of criteria, add new types of uh, of, of mapping, and so on. I want I want to mention one last thing uh, that's kind of in line with the you know with the story of of how the SharePoint connector the the the, the basic principle of this, and that is that. Everything you have seen is extendable. Uh, so if you're sitting and saying, hmm, Eric, that looks great, but I have a source that is not really one of the three you have mentioned. Uh, well, through a two customization, you can add new sources. Uh, and, and and the system, then you need to tell, tell how to, to work with your source, but but the, there there is a way just to add another source through customization. The same thing goes with criteria that there there's there's a there's a way to through customization to add another criteria and and then if if you need oh well I I have my own source and I have my own criteria you create that as customizations and then everything else will just use that and and, and work uh, normally so. Kind of goes uh, goes in the line of, of of what I said to begin with that this is this is meant the SharePoint connector is is both meant to be you know a very great end user tool to handle document management but it's also a tool that you can use to incorporate into your own uh, own design and solutions and with that I think I will uh, uh, send send this back to uh, to Mark okay. Eric, um, that was very impressive. Uh, let me just share, show my screen. And uh, all I know is that when I go to bed at night, I dream of unicorns and rainbows. And uh, clearly you dream about many other things other than that. So uh, that was very well done. And uh, no need to apologize about going into setup screens because uh, one thing that I've uh, realized after doing several of these webinars with you is that the quality and the depth of the questions that we get is, is always kind of at a pretty high level. So I think uh, I'm not, you know, I'm just going to go out and say it, but probably the audience is okay with it. Um, so anyways, after a really great demo, uh, why don't we launch into our, uh, our second poll and uh, give everybody a moment to find the mouses. So do you think the SharePoint Connector app has the potential to solve your uh, document management needs or issues at your organization? Yes, no, or not sure. Now, I'll take a quick pause. A little known fact that uh, the attachments feature, which is the out of the box feature, uh, document management feature for, for Business Central that ships with the product, uh, it does in fact save these documents in your uh, Business Central database, cloud database, um, consuming some of that precious capacity. Uh, so when you buy Business Central, what do you get normally? You get, well, you get two sandboxes, you get a live production environment, but all of it is a total of 80 gigs. Now you also get um, two gigs uh, times the number of users. Uh, so just very simple math here. Let's take five users, for example. Five users times two is 10, so 10 gigs. 
add that to the 80, you get a total of 90 gigs. So um, again, um, additional database capacity could always be added by your Microsoft partner, your cloud service provider. Uh, but again, uh, you know, saving your documents in Business Central, is it the best long-term solution? Remains to be debated. So uh, Ariana, we'll just give it maybe a, a few seconds here and we'll uh, shut down the poll and see uh, how we did. So just uh, give me a moment and I'll uh, pull up the poll results. Wow, okay, so here we are. We have 86% uh, showing as yes and 14% as not sure. And uh, well, the great thing is that we do have the opportunity for a live Q&A. So for those that are not sure, we have the ability to answer any outstanding questions that you have. And of course, we are also very, very available um, afterwards, uh, post-webinar as well, if you have any follow-up questions. So uh, why don't we go ahead and uh, move on to the next step. If I could just get this Come on, today. click, click, click. Okay. Now there this brings go. us to the live uh, Q&A portion of the webinar. So let's take a quick look at some of the questions that you guys have asked during the presentation. So I'm just going to bring that up now. And uh, I guess we'll start off with the first uh, question here, which is, uh, is the SharePoint Connector app available for Business Central on-premise? And that is a common question that we do get. And uh, the answer is yes. Uh, through your trusted Microsoft partner, uh, you, yes, you can uh, get the SharePoint Connector app for uh, on-premise installation of Business Central. But it should be known that we only support uh, two versions back from the current. Uh, so I think as of today, we are version 20. Although I think version 21 is coming out very soon, we next are week. supporting. Is it next week? Okay, uh, we are uh, supporting up to version 18. Now, uh, with that said, uh, we do have uh, certain exceptions where customers are are on an earlier version of Business Central on premise. Um, we don't obviously support it, but there is some compatibility. But you, it may not be fully featured. So again, if you're in a situation where you're not on the latest version please do contact us and we can have a conversation about uh, potential fit for your, for your organization. Okay, um, next question is, how much does the SharePoint Connector cost? And uh, we sell the SharePoint Connector in a one-year subscription for uh, $2,500 US, US dollars, okay? And let me just open up the rest of the questions that we have here. All right, I've got uh, another one here. Uh, do we need additional licenses for Microsoft Power Automate? And if so, what kind? Well, that that kind of depends on volume. Uh, but 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 the uh, and and it depends on what other Microsoft subscriptions you have. Uh, so. You you might need to add Power Automate uh, subscriptions uh, depending on your volume and depending on if you're on an E3 versus an E5 and that does you know Microsoft licensing is yeah, that's a full time job uh, <laughs> um, but but the short answer you might okay thank you thank you Eric. All right, uh, the next question that we have here is a great question. How often is the SharePoint Connector app updated? Are app updates automatically applied? Um, so the app is constantly updated. I, I think uh, the, the so, so we, we can actually do a, uh, because we're all friends here. So we can, we can go to uh, to the extension management and look at, at oh then I need to show my screen. Uh -huh. Am I allowed to? I, I think you can. Yeah, um, Ariana, if you're out there, <laughs> would you be able to help share the screen for, for Eric? Um, so we have the SharePoint connector here, and and 
we can see that the version is is 3.00143. So clearly, version three is is version three as 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 on the uh, uh, on on, uh, on the title of the webinar. But the 143 means that this is actually not necessarily the 143 uh, time that it was uh, uh, released to uh, to app source app source, but it's kind of close so it's there's constant development there's constant updates but what's happened is that your your business central will not update apps unless you're in a situation where uh, you're going to a major upgrade so if i go into app uh, sorry to uh, to admin center here and i look at apps on my environment then I can see all the apps I have, and I think I'm actually uh, there's one app that where there's an update available that I haven't installed. Uh, but otherwise, when, whenever you do a major upgrade, Microsoft will upgrade all your apps to the newest version. Otherwise, you have to go in here and say, okay, now I actually want the, the latest version. So potentially your apps will be up to six months old. Uh, and in, in, in case of us, our cadence of releasing has nothing to do with Microsoft unless there is something where we need to update due to something Microsoft is doing. Otherwise, we're releasing whenever there's a, 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 a version that passes all tests and uh, is deemed ready for, uh, for public consumption. Okay, that's great. Thank you, Eric. All right, the next, oh, I'll just go back to uh, my screen here. And uh, the next question, uh, can the connector work with metadata fields? Uh, yes. Uh, now I need to show the screen again. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, let me see where we at. So let me find the customer we just created. and and. And let me actually find the customer in here. So I actually showed that, but I should probably have actually told it instead of just uh, just saying it. So in this case, I created a new customer just before demo and uh, and assigned a phone number to it. Oh, apparently you're not seeing my screen. Now you're seeing my screen. There it is. There. So I created a customer before the the webinar and I assigned a phone number to it. Um, so if I go, we, if we go and look at, at SharePoint now to the customer folder, we can see that there is actually a, a custom column in SharePoint called phone. And we see two of the three files have the phone number on it. But remember the third one, the DS were actually not added from Business Central. This was added from, from, from SharePoint. But these two were added from, this one was uploaded, this was, was generated from Business Central. And Again, uh, have to go into into setup. What I have done in the setup here is on that table on the related metadata columns. I have told that I want the address to go into a custom column called address and the phone number going into a custom column called phone. Uh, so we can populate Business Central with, with sorry, we can populate documents on SharePoint with metadata from Business Central only at creation. Uh, so it's whatever that that we have at creation time and then it stays like that. Uh, people are typically using this for, you know, if you want a customer number or an email or stuff like that, because you have some other SharePoint functionality where you would like, uh, not like, but where you need uh, this kind of metadata to make the other functionality uh, do what you want it to do. Okay, that's great, Eric. Thank you very much. Uh, I got one here from Tim, and this one is: uh, Can we archive? Uh, sorry, can archive documents? So that would be purchase orders, sales orders. Uh, can they be pointed or moved to the SharePoint folder as well? Sure. Uh, I think I have a. Here we can see the purchase header archive is is mapped. So if we want to map the 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 the, the sales header uh, archive, it it's um it's a matter of me being able to spell so sales header archive i add a mapping to that 
I probably want to do what is known as reference number and, and sales. And then I'd tell that the folder name should be from the number field on, on this one. Uh, so now that one is mapped. The potential I need to do do more. I can't remember if uh, archiving is turned on for this. Um, so it's it's not. But if I were able to go into the uh, the archived card now, uh, the SharePoint box would show up, uh, and it will. I, I probably need to actually complete this and and tell that the the parent table for sales header archive would be the customer and the the connecting field between the sales setter and the customer would be the bill to customer number. So yeah. Now okay. now that table is also available in uh, for mapping. Or oh, it's already mapped. Yeah. That's great. Thanks, Eric. Uh, next one here is uh, what does the setup of the SharePoint connector entail and how long does it take? So I I have a YouTube video on on the eFocus YouTube channel that that does the setup and that video is eight minutes long uh, and most of that is actually just me talking uh, so so not very long uh, but what can take a uh, you know a a few meetings it's is kind of deciding on the folder structure. Uh, yeah. So if 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 you're you know if 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 you're saying okay now we're moving to a a fresh untouched SharePoint and we'll just take the standard table mapping and 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 go for it then you're ready in in eight minutes. Uh, but but if if you have existing structures and you want to adapt that and you may want to clean up a bit and so on, then does it takes a bit of more time. But it, it's actually right. not setting up. The app that takes the time. It's typically, you know, discussion around uh, the, the folder structures and so on. One thing I, I did not mention. Uh, also, a pseudo recent uh, addition uh, is the ability to. We are supporting multi sites, so so SharePoint in general works at that that you have a SharePoint thingy. And within that, there's tons of sites, uh, subsites, uh, groups. It has many names. Uh, but you might want to create a create document silo so finance information is not kept together with something else. And 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 you can do that with the SharePoint connector uh, by saying for specific tables that you want to override the site to something else than the default site. Or override the document library to something else than than the default document library, and then you can switch uh, switch what we call the authentication method from. So if in, right now this one is set to proxy, meaning that all Business Info users are accessing uh, SharePoint with the same uh, proxy credentials, but if I switch this to personal, then every Business Central user is authenticating towards uh, SharePoint as themselves. Uh, so you can apply SharePoint security on everything if you if you need to. Okay, that's great, Eric. And uh, I think I've got time for one more question. This one's to be more of a, an API related question, but uh, in your expert opinion, is API a sufficient replacement or substitute for EDI transmission? What variables? Uh, show API to be more effective. Well, so so that's that's a, that's a long question, but 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 in this, so so EDI is not documents, right? That's data representing a document that you're sending back and forth. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you have an EDI API endpoint, that I would go for that any uh, any time of the day. Uh, but but getting invoices in and PDF and OCRing them, comparing to actually getting stuff as EDI as data, then EDI as data is still way more reliable. Uh, but but I think you know right now API is 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 a is a hot label to put on stuff. Um, 
but but uh, in the end of the day, it, it's it's just web service, but it's it's better web service than what we have been used to. Okay, that's great. Thank you, Eric. Um, just a, another uh, question that just came through right now, and uh, I think this one I, I think I understand it, but is there a way to search for dropped files? inside Business Central. And I'm wondering if drop files would be maybe a sales order that's been posted and then goes away. I'm not entirely sure, but maybe depends on how you interpret it, Eric. Is there a way to search for dropped files inside Business Central? Maybe there's a tie into archiving, but uh, how would you how would you sort of uh, approach that one? Well, well, if 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 drop means often, uh, but you can you can always so we cannot see that something is no longer mapped uh, because uh, one of when when we're mapping we have two different ways of mapping. We either had a static mapping saying that whatever something in Business Central, like a customer, is always mapped to this folder no matter what. Then we have uh, a more dynamic mapping where it looks and see oh what's the value of the fields that we need to figure out what the folder name is right now. And, and depending on what the value of those fields are, then we find that folder. But if you change the fields, if you upload a file and then change the fields, then you get a different folder. So potentially you have a folder that is related to data that doesn't exist anymore. But but we don't really have a, a, a way to say, hey, we had this folder and it was belonging to, it belonged to this data, but for now that data doesn't exist anymore. What we do have, and, and we all have that is, is that the search function on on SharePoint is 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 pretty good. Uh, so so if you knew something was on SharePoint at some point, but you're actually unsure where it was, you can go search on SharePoint, and and most likely you'll find it because the the search function is is pretty nice. So I I know I know of customers using the SharePoint connector, and they have users that oh we need to look up this invoice. And instead of going into Business Central and go to the Postal Sales Invoice and put in the, the, the invoice number, they put the invoice number into the SharePoint search box and just find the invoice, wherever that may be in your, in your folder structure. Um, so, so that is an option. I'm not sure I actually answered the question, but... but I, I think uh, you did. I think you interpreted it better than I did. So I think hopefully, Sasha, that did answer your question. And if it didn't, uh, feel free to reach out to us as well. And sure. then I think the last uh, few questions were just around, um, is the webinar going to be available after? Uh, yes, and, and absolutely, we will uh, send a copy of the recording for any of your colleagues that were not able to make it. And then eventually this uh, recording will also make it up into our eFocus uh, YouTube channel as well. So you can definitely find it there. So um, wonderful. So I think that kind of, I, I think that really just kind of wraps up the Q&A portion. And uh, we can just kind of get to the next few slides and uh, wrap it up here for today. So I think, uh, Ariane, if you can share my screen, unless you have already. We are seeing your screen. Yes, there we go. Okay, perfect. All right, so um, just here for, for next steps. Um, yes, well, thank you. Please take a couple of minutes to complete a very short survey that pops up in your screen at the conclusion of the webinar. Don't forget, forget to check out the SharePoint connector on App Source, Microsoft's marketplace for everything and anything related to Business Central. And, uh, you know, again, uh, download a free trial. This the solution is available as a free trial. And uh, we will make the link for the free trial available in the chat box as well. And of course, if you have any questions that have been unanswered or if you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can find us at info at efocus.ca. So thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Eric, for taking us on this journey through this amazing app. And we're wishing you all a wonderful day and we look forward to joining, uh, have you guys join us on the next webinar. Cheers.